In this video, we're going to be going over a CAD tutorial inside of Bobcad Cam. Now, the main three menus we use while we're drawing are going to be the Create 2D tab, the Create 3D tab, and the Utilities. Create 2D is where we're going to go to lay down most of our wireframe geometry. Create 3D is where we're going to create our 3D geometry. And then utilities is how we can modify things. If we need to mirror something or translate something to move it or rotate it, then that's the one we're going to use. So for now, I'm just going to go to create 2D and I'm going to go ahead and click on arc. Now, right down here, we're going to choose a six inch diameter arc. And you have a choice of either entering in the diameter of six inches or a three inch radius. So I'm just going to go ahead and say a six inch diameter and then I'm going to hit OK. Now, after that's done, I'm going to go ahead and create a hole right here in the center. So I'm going to leave my center at X, Y, Z, zero. And so for the center hole, we're going to go ahead and set the radius to 0.375 so that we have a three quarter inch diameter. And again, I'm going to leave it at X, Y, Z, zero and hit OK. And that's going to put it right there in the middle. Now, the next hole we're going to make has a radius of 0.1875. So I'm just going to say 0.1875. And then I'm going to say my X center location is going to be minus 2.5. And that's going to move one over to the left. So I'll hit OK. And then I'm just going to update that X to 2.5 and hit OK once again. And that's going to give me my two holes. From here, I can then cancel out. So now that we have our three holes inside of our arc, this is going to be our bottom geometry. So I just want to go over here to the right onto my layers. And I want to double click on where it says CAD. And I'm just going to go ahead and call this bottom wireframe. And now we have that layer created. Now, the next thing we're going to do is create a new layer by clicking this little button right here. It says new layer. Or you can actually just right click in the box and add a new layer. But we have our layer one now. And I'm just going to go ahead and call this layer main solid, just like that. Now, you want to pay attention to where your check mark is. That is your active drawing layer. So anything that we add to the drawing, instead of it going to the bottom wireframe layer, it's going to go to the main solid layer. So we want to make sure that check mark is on that layer. Now, after we have the layer created, we're then going to go up to the Create 3D tab and then down to Extrude Curve. Now, before I do this, we could do this from a top view, but right now we can't see any depth that's happening on this part. So I want to change my view to an isometric view or rotate it with my mouse. And again, with the mouse, I'm just holding the middle mouse wheel down like a button to rotate. If we click this button right here, though, it'll let us go back to our top view. What I want to do is look at an isometric view. So I'm going to click the arrow next to this. And right here we have our standard views, top, bottom, front, back, left, and right. And then right here we have ISO views. So it's one through four here on the left and then five through eight on the right. And I wanna go ahead and click on ISO two. And the reason I do that is now that I can see all three axes, I get the perspective of depth and I can actually see the depth show up. So the next step, if I've created everything correctly, I should be able to just drag a box over this. Now, if you have any duplicate geometry, that could cause a problem, in which case under utilities, we do have a little button called clean up optimize, which will erase duplicates if you accidentally put them down. Currently, this is going up one inch. I need it to go down two inches. So I'm going to put a zero in for this positive direction distance, which is automatically going to put a one in the other direction distance. And I'm going to set that distance to two. There's our preview. Make sure it looks right. And then we can go ahead and hit OK. So now that we have the extrusion done, we're just going to cancel out of the feature. And then we could go up to cone again under create 3D. So this is using a primitive solid. So we'll create a cone. We're going to tell it that the top radius is one inch. The base radius is going to be 1.75. And then the total height is just going to be 1.5 inches. So it should shrink a little bit. There we go. When we're done with that, once again, we can hit OK. And then cancel out. 
So now that we have the cone on top, what we could do is grab our select tool and just touch the models. So what we'll see is they light up as two independent solid models from each other. What I need to do is add these two together to make them one complete solid model. So to do that, again, under Create 3D, we're going to go to Boolean. Now, by default, it's going to use Add, but you could also subtract or intersect. We don't have any geometry for that, but we'll go ahead and go with Add. We pick the two solid models, and then to show the preview, we have to click Show Preview, which with Add, it doesn't really show you the preview. It kind of just looks like the geometry we selected. So the best way to check if two things add together properly is, one, if the preview doesn't show up, it's not adding anything together properly. So I always do use the preview, but to really double check it, what we do is we hit OK, then cancel out of the feature, and then once again, we can grab our Select tool and touch the model. And this time, when we touch any part of the model, the whole thing is going to light up, not two independent solids. Now, we need everything stitched together or added together for the next step, which is putting a fillet on the part. We're going to do a quarter inch fillet down at the bottom and a 3 8 fillet up top. So I'm going to say solid fillet. And by default, it starts out with a quarter inch radius. So I'm just going to pick the intersecting edge between those two surfaces there. So I'm going to pick that one for a quarter inch. And then I can actually go in and change my size. So this is going to be a 0.375 for the top radius. And all I have to do is pick the top edge. And what you'll see is it keeps track of what radius was set when you pick the geometry. It's actually best to do your radiuses all at the same time if you can, because now I can go down and say show preview, and it's going to show me what the result will look like if I hit OK. Now, if you hit show preview and the model disappears, it means that we're not able to fill it that. So it's not going to succeed in the fillet. In this case, it shows up perfectly. We'll go ahead and hit OK, cancel out, and there is our 3 8 fillet and our quarter inch fillet right there on the part. So now what we need to do is get that hole on the bottom to go all the way through to the top. Now, the reason it's in there is because when we did our initial extrusion, we added it in, but we need to have it go through this cone as well. So to do this, we're just going to use extrude cut. Now, for us to be able to pick the geometry, the problem we're going to run into is that the model's in the way. So what we could do is left click anywhere inside this drawing window and then hit the letter S on the keyboard. S is in surface and it's going to hide the shading for the surfaces and just show us kind of the wireframe to everything. Now what I could do is just go and pick that arc in the middle right there and it's going to create an extrusion up. Now, because the hole's already going down into the part, I only need this to go up through the part. But you'll notice I can go as much through as I want. I could drag even further than that. I can go less than that. As long as I'm clear of this edge right here, this hole's gonna go all the way through. The big thing we need to be concerned with is if there was another solid model in the window with this, this extrude cut, if it touches it, would also subtract from that as well. So I'm just going to leave that there like that. And I'm even going to drag the bottom down because again, it doesn't matter if I go too big because I'm not specifying a specific distance. I just need the hole to go all the way through. So again, make it large enough to go all the way through, hit OK, cancel out. And then if we click back in here, again, just left click in here so that your shortcuts work. Basically, you're making this the active window. We can go ahead and hit the letter S again on the keyboard and turn the shading back on. And now we'll see we have a hole all the way through our part. So the next step, I'm going to go to a top view, just so I have everything topped up. And now what we're going to do is add two slots into this, two kind of circular shaped slots on one side here and down here. So before I start drawing that, I want to make a new layer. I'm going to right click in my layers and say add new layer. And I'm just going to call this layer slot. And then I want to make sure my check marks on it, which it should. Anytime you create a new layer, it should make that the active layer. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn off the bottom wireframe and the main solid layer. So we're left with kind of a blank screen so we can draw these independently without getting any interference from the other two layers. Now to create the slots, we're actually going to make, for each slot, we're going to make three arcs. So I'm going to start by going up to Create 2D and then Arc. And I'm going to start by setting up my X center, which is going to be 2.4375. If 
the radius of this one is going to be 0.375. So 0.375, which is a three-quarter inch diameter. After that, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And then we're going to go ahead and zero out the X. So we'll put a zero there. And then for Y, we're going to go with the same distance of 2.4375. And that's going to create another arc up top. And I'll hit OK. And then I'm going to do a negative 2.4375. So I'm just going to update that and hit OK. After we're done with that, we'll cancel out. Now, I don't want a slot that goes all the way around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change where this arc is sitting. I'm going to move it 35 degrees. So to do that, we're going to go up to Utilities and then Rotate. Now, when you use Rotate, you're going to define the angle around the axis, but you're also defining the center of rotation, which for us, because we're drawing around XYZ0, is XYZ0. So all I have to do is pick this arc right here and say that in Z, I want to go 35 degrees, and then I could go ahead and hit OK. Now, after we have this one done, and we didn't copy it because we wanted to get rid of the original, what I can now do is select that same arc, and this time the Z is going to go 110 degrees. Now, if I was to hit OK, I would lose the one that I selected, and I would get this previewed one that shows up right here. But I want both of them. I want the original that I drew and the new one. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on Copies, and then hit OK. And there we go. Now we have our arc there. So what we're going to end up doing is connecting these three around the outside and then trimming everything in between. But before I can do that, I need to get these two arcs on the other side. So I could continue to rotate them around and add copies, but the easier way to do it is to go up to the mirror command and then pick the two arcs. So I'm just going to pick both of them. And what you'll see is right now we're mirroring across the YZ plane. So it's actually mirroring across a plane that's sitting along this way. So it's just mirroring through that plane to the other side. We need to mirror through this plane, which is the X and Z plane. So we just need to click XZ. And then again, we need to make sure to turn on copy because we don't want to lose the originals. So once again, we'll hit OK, cancel out, and there is the arc. So now we have both sides done. Now I need to connect them together. So from the top of here around and the bottom around. So we're going to go to Create 2D and then Arc. And then I'm going to go ahead and choose this option right here, which is Arc 3 Points endpoints radius. So what we're doing is we're defining the endpoint and then we're defining the radius. So when we hover over these arcs, these points pop up and they're extra points. These are kind of the tangent points for this. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this top point here on the upper left hand side. There's two points. We want to pick the top one there, go straight across and pick the top one on the opposite side. So those are the two endpoints defined. And now we can add our bend. And again, with the bend, all I have to do is hover over my arc, wait for the snap point to pop up, and I'm going to pick this top point right here. After that one's done, I'll just hit OK. And then we'll go do the second one. Again, this one I'm going to pick in the lower right-hand corner, but I'm still going to pick the upper point, the top point there. So I'm going to pick that one, go straight across, Pick the same point on the other side. And if these lines that you see all over the place are getting in the way, feel free to turn off this button right here, which is Construction Geometry and XY Tracking, and that'll hide that for you. So now I can go and pick that point there. And then we're just going to go and pick the bottom point of this arc in the middle. So I can pick that point, cancel out. And the next step is, so I don't have to do that again because you do have to be pretty precise on your picking with that. Instead of doing it all again, I'm just going to go to Utilities and then Mirror, which it's already got all the settings that we used to mirror earlier. So I don't even have to change anything. All I have to do is pick that arc there and that arc there, and I have the extras. Make sure that your copy is still on, and then hit OK and cancel out. Now that I have the arcs created that connects everything together. What I want is just the outer profile. So I want to trim everything inside of there. And the way we do that is by using Quick Trim under Utilities. This allows me to just click on the geometry that I no longer want. So I'm just going to start on this side and click. It's going to trim away. I'll go to the opposite side, trim that away. And then this one right here, this is where it gets a little funky when you're doing your trims. 
at your 3 o'clock position, that is the point on the arc where 0 and 360 meet each other. So there's always a split in that location. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on those two pieces of the arc there and then do the same thing on the bottom side. Trim out all that extra geometry right there. And there we have it. So now we can cancel out a quick trim. And then we're going to go and take these two pieces and sync them into the part. We're going to cut them from the solid model. So I'm going to start by turning on the main solid layer, rotating or going up to my view and going to an ISO 2 view so I can get a good view of the part. And then I'm going to go to Create 3D, Extrude Cut. I'm going to once again click in this window here so that it becomes active so that I can hit the letter S to hide the surfaces. And then I'm just going to hold Shift and pick both shapes, just like so. Now we'll notice it's going way bigger because this is what I used when I did my extrude cut earlier. These are the numbers I had. But if we know where we're sitting right there on this kind of surface for that solid right there, we're sitting right on that surface, I could just go to right here in the other direction distance and set it to 0.75. And that's only going to cut it in 3 quarters of an inch deep. Now I can go ahead and hit OK. And there is the two slotted pockets for our part. Now that we have the slots in the part, what I'm now going to do is move my check mark up to main solid. And I'm just going to turn off the slot geometry just to hide the wireframe that was there. I could go ahead and cancel out of extrude cut as well. Now the reason we need that geometry hidden is because the next step is we're going to do a solid chamfer. And I'm going to go ahead and set my chamfer width to 0.031. And then I'm just going to pick the top edge all the way around this slot. So I'm just going to pick every edge of this slot here. So we're just going to click on them all, all the way around. We got to make sure we get all the little pieces. There is a couple little edges that we got to make sure to grab as well. So that one there and that one there. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. So once again, got the little edges that we need to make sure to grab like so. And then right here, we'll zoom in, grab this edge here and that little guy there. Now to make sure everything kind of looks right, we could then go and say show preview. And it's going to show us a preview of that little chamfer there. And then while we're here, we're also going to go and pick the top of this arc here, the top of the center arc there, and the top of the other arc on the other side, the hole on the other side. So we could chamfer all of them. And again, we could show our preview. And that's going to show us our chamfers on all the holes and the slots. And then when we're done, we can hit OK and then cancel out. Now, the next thing we're going to do is add some grooves onto the side. And the way we're going to add these grooves is by creating a torus under Create 3D. So I'll go torus. For the major radius, I'm going to set it to 3. And then for my minor radius, I'm going to set it to 0.15. Now, the difference, we're going to do three grooves. The difference between them is that the Z is going to change. So the first Z is going to be minus 0.875. And then we're going to go ahead and just click in any other box, or you could hit tab on your keyboard, and it's going to update the preview. After we have it situated correctly, we'll hit OK one time. Now, without exiting the feature, we're then going to just change Z to minus 1.25. And then again, if we hit tab, it'll update the preview and show us our torus on the outside again. So we'll hit OK. And then again, without leaving that torus command, we're going to say that our final is going to be minus 1.625. And again, we could hit tab on the keyboard, or you could just click in another box, and that's going to update the preview. And then we can hit OK and cancel out. Now that we have the three toruses on the outside, we're going to go up to Boolean, again under Create 3D. But this time we're going to use Subtract. Now the way that Subtract is going to work is you always want to pick what you want to keep and then pick what you want to remove from that. So I want to keep this main solid and I want to remove these three toruses from the outside. Again, rely on your preview to make sure everything's going to work. If I say Show Preview and it doesn't show me a preview, there's a problem. But since it showed me a preview and everything looks good, I can go ahead and hit OK and then cancel out when it's all done. 
Now the next thing I want to do is create a big pocket on the bottom side that kind of cuts its way in. And that's just wireframe geometry. So I'm going to start by going up to Create 2D and then Arc. Now I'm going to set up my radius first at 2.8. But the problem is we can't see what's going on because right now it's situated at XYZ0. If we were to go to a top view, we could see it, but it doesn't really help us. So what I need to do is I'm going to click in this window and then I'm going to hit the letter S to hide the shading. Now, because I clicked in the window, we just locked in an arc at this location, not in the correct location. But what you'll notice is that arc is a darker color blue right now because it's still editable. We can actually go and change the values of this arc right now. So I'll say X is going to be sitting at zero, Y sits at zero, and Z is going to go to a minus one inch. And we'll see it drop down. So now we can hit OK, cancel out, and then cut this thing through. Now normally you could turn the model back on, but there's nothing really to see. So now what I can do is just go to Create 3D, Extrude Cut, and I'm just going to go ahead and pick that arc we just created. And right now it's going up 2.3125. I'm going to zero that out. I don't want it to go up at all. I just want it to go down. We also want to make sure that it goes down all the way through the part. So what I could do is grab the bottom arrow here, click it, but don't hold your click. Just click on it once, move the cursor, and then click again. And when I'm done, I can then hit OK, cancel out, click in the CAD window once again, and hit the letter S, and we'll see we now have a pocket on the bottom of that part. And that's it. Now we have the part drawn. Now what I always like to do is set my part in a good isometric view. So I'm going to say ISO 2, and then I'm going to fit all. And the reason I do this is because now when I do a save as, I can save the file, and it's actually going to show up as a nice, clean kind of model. So I have it here. There's my CAD tutorial finished. So I'll say save. And the reason I like to do the save the way I did is because if I go to open up a file again, and I click on this, it'll actually show me a screenshot of my part wherever it was sitting in the CAD window when I saved it. So this is a good way for me to know which part I'm looking at as I'm clicking through my files. It makes it a lot easier for me. And so I like to set it up in a view that works out. So again, I'll cancel out of that. There is our final finished part. We've made sure to save it. And that concludes the video on the CAD tutorial for Bobcad Cam.